Well, you've all heard of sustainability and doing your part in becoming more environmentally friendly, but what does that all mean? Today, we begin our journey to becoming uncommon Epicureans. I have Dr. Deval Patel here to tell us more and help us embark on this new journey. We can all do our part and make a difference. So tell me, what is an Epicurean? Thanks, Clarissa. A Epicurean is a person mm -hmm. that seeks simple pleasures in life. Okay. Stemming from the Greek philosophy and Epicureanism. But I've kind of expanded that notion, mm -hmm. right? Most of us think of being an Epicurean and you think about food and beverage and that sort of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But that same principle can be applied to travel, okay. culture, being in a garden, hanging out with friends, going to a museum, simple pleasures in life and living that lifestyle. I love this concept because I think we're also oversaturated with different stimulation from everywhere that it's difficult to simplify. And the more simple things are, the easier it is to partake in those simple pleasures. So For sure. we're going to become uncommon Epicureans. Love it. Which also has a lot to do with sustainability. So let's talk about that word and what it means to our friends at home. Great. Uh, sustainability is the capability, the actions of making sure that our future generations are left with at least status quo in our mm -hmm. environment, if sure. not even more, right? Okay. We don't want to deplete resources. We want to be thinking about it in a very meaningful way for our next generation. But in energy, environment is definitely part of it. But sustainability applies to the way that we eat, mm -hmm. to our travel, to the way that we hang out with people, okay. our healthcare, the jobs that we have. It's all about sustainability. It's an sure. undercurrent of our community. Absolutely, the plates, the utensils that we use, exactly. all of those simple exactly. things, right? Okay, so that's good to know. And it all starts within your own home, within your own community. So how does this relate to our friends at home? You think, how does this really affect me? I don't live in this big bustling city where things are getting thrown away and, mm -hmm. and wasted, but how does this apply to us right here locally? It applies no matter where you live, mm -hmm. right? Just you just gave a great example, the way that we throw away stuff, right? We should be recycling, we should yeah. be repurposing stuff, not just throwing it away. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you're a big city or a small city. Where you get your food, for example, right? It, did it come from a local farmer? Did it come from your own garden? Mm -hmm. Did it come all the way from, you know, India, for example? Sure. You can make an impact right there in your own backyard, but you gotta teach our kids as a starting point in your own home about these concepts now, not when they're older. Absolutely, and of course you have the benefit of convenience for those things that are shipped from overseas and maybe sure. less healthy, but it is in a, a conscious effort, if you will, to make it to the local farmer's market or exactly. to contact that person that can deliver eggs to your door. For sure. That are and, right and down the street. And there's a trade-off, right? Mm -hmm. If you get it from the big conglomerate that sends you stuff that's really convenient compared to just going down. But there are a tremendous number of farmer's markets so you yeah. can get some of these products all the so time many. now. Sure. Go and make a field day with your kids mm -hmm. and enjoy that experience. Absolutely. So they're, they're trade-offs, but well worth it. I love that. And I love getting the kids involved because when it comes to sustainability, it really the end game is helping their future and your grandchildren's future. So you want to keep that in mind and teach them at a young age. I love that. Now this all ties in. We're, we're beginning this journey of becoming uncommon Epicureans. Now you understand a little bit about what that means. And we're really going to delve into this a little bit deeper. So we want you to stick around because for our next portion, we're going to talk about clean energy and how that ties into sustainability right here in our own community. So we're here on site at the Orsted Lay Down Yard with Tatiana here to tell us more about clean energy and the purpose of Orsted, how it's benefiting the community. So thank you for joining me, Tatiana. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah. Tell me about clean energy and Orsted. What does the company do and how does it benefit the community? Sure. So Orsted is one of the global leaders of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. uh, we have projects all over the United States wind, solar, and high, uh, storage projects. Okay. Here in Bee County, we're looking to implement a wind and solar project um, to co-locate it in this community so that we can bring um, clean renewable energy to the area. Fantastic, well that's what it's all about. We keep hearing about clean renewable energy, but a lot of us don't really understand how it gets to where we live. So even in a town like Beeville, this is something you could be familiar with. So tell me how that ties in to Coastal Living and our partnership with the Coffee Barrel. Absolutely. So one of the big things we like to do when we enter any community is to find out who our key partners are. And someone like Duvall and the Coffee Barrel has been in very important to us to create this partnership mm -hmm. and be part of this community. We really care about the, the areas that we operate in as one of the largest property taxpayers and um, you know, being supportive of the area, whether it's the school system, the county, 
uh, the residents. There's many, many benefits that come from these renewable energy projects. And just working with Deval uh, Patel is just one of those great examples. Sure, well they say it takes an army, or in this case, a community and an organization like yours in the coffee barrel to really make a difference. Now all this hard work really has gotten me working up an appetite. So <laughs> let's get into the kitchen and cook up something yummy for lunchtime. It's time to get cooking. Tell me what is on the menu today. Hey, I'm really excited. Okay, so, so we've got some real local products here. We're gonna make a pork slider, mm -hmm. which is gonna have all this great, awesome flavor to it. Cumin, garlic, salt, pepper. Okay. Um, Clarissa, if you wanna open Locally that package up. Yeah, right I'm really excited about this product because it comes literally 25 minutes from here, mm -hmm. from peaceful pork, um, sustainably free ranging um, um, animals, and the, the pigs are just great. I mean, take all that pork uh -huh. and kind of dump it into the metal into bowl. The okay. And I want you to kind of really start mixing it all in. Okay. And be generous with the flavoring here, right? Okay. Cuban's got that nice smokiness to it. Mm -hmm. uh, garlic, we all know garlic and love it, and it just brings out the best in every kind of protein you can think of. Mm -hmm. Salt and pepper. Okay, so. Don't be shy. Don't be shy, but with salt, we don't want to go too heavy, No, exactly, right? exactly, because okay, we've got some cheeses pepper. that we're going to add to the slider and the sauce that Cumin. will kind of complement it, yeah? All right, and we love garlic, so yeah, we're going to go yeah, heavy yeah. on the garlic. Hey, more, I say. More? Okay. Yeah, for sure, all right. How's that look, yeah. good? Massage all that in, mix, mix it in, yeah, in. great. Love it. And then you're going to create little slider patties, right? Okay. Just like we do with hamburgers, you can do the same thing with, uh, with Italian pork sausage mm -hmm. here from Peaceful Pork, so I would recommend yeah. doing that. I always like to use olive oil because of the health benefits and, and olive oil. We've mm -hmm. talked about that before, I believe, Carissa. Yeah. So, yeah, great. Let's kind of Lay dump that. Yeah, so make a few of those. Okay. I'm on it. So, we need to kind of flip these. Let's kind of. Okay, let me kind switch of sear down. Yeah. Sure, I'm being sanitary. And, uh, grab one of those spatulas in there. Okay. So, let me just look at this, Carissa. Who would not want oh, that's to beautiful. taste that? I mean, a beautiful piece, right? Flipping these babies, that oil is doing them good. Yeah. Looks like we got all the flavor packed yeah, in there. Heat that just a little bit. Turn up give the it heat. a little okay. bit, yeah. Give it a little bit more sear, okay? So, about again, five to seven minutes on that, but I kind of did something. Okay. I made some earlier. Oh, some TV magic. Hey, I boom, love boom, it. boom, boom. Exactly, I love right? It. So, okay. we're going to kind of let that kind of cook a, a, a little along little here. Longer. We got those already made. Time In the meantime, let's grab uh, our side dish. These are beets mm -hmm. that we showed earlier, right, from the garden. I kind of already peeled them, cut them up, and I want you to remember something. Every part of the beet can be consumed outside of the, the outer sort of shell, but these are the, the, leaves. the, the leaves. Super tasty. All you really got to do is and don't throw these away. You can take the bottoms if you, I mean, don't, you don't really need these, but these can be sauteed up just like oh, other, other greens, right? Sure, exactly. Kale spinach or, anything or like kale that. or okay. collard greens. Cool. Got the, the pan going. I'm gonna kind of throw that. It does have a high water content, so be careful. Take a little bit of salt. Okay, let me freshen up my gloves. Yeah. When we return, we're going to continue that delicious recipe. Now, trust me, it was so good. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back.